Bruce Springsteen and Barack Obama lent their star power to Kamala Harris's quest for the presidency on Thursday, as the vice president implored Georgia voters to consider the brutally serious consequences if Donald Trump wins a second term in the White House. Harris echoed that message in her speech, attacking Trump by comparing him to the predators, fraudsters and repeat offenders she prosecuted early in her career and arguing she is focused on Americans while her Republican opponent is focused on himself. I took them on and I won, Harris said. Well, Georgia, in 12 days, it's Donald Trump's turn. It's his turn. It's either Donald Trump in there stewing over his enemies list, or me working for you, checking off my to-do list, she added, speaking of the work either would do in the Oval Office. You have the power to make that decision. Someone who says we should terminate the Constitution of the United States of America should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America, Harris said. Never again. Thursday's event is the first in the campaign's When We Vote We Win concert series that aims to encourage Harris supporters to vote before Election Day. It was over. It was 17 years ago. It was over 17 years ago when I took a trip to Springfield, Illinois. It was a cold February day. And I went there to support this brilliant young senator who was running for president of the United States. And millions of Americans were energized and inspired, not only by Barack Obama's message, but by how he leads, seeking to unite rather than separate us. And that is why in 2007, 2007, I went New Year's Eve to Iowa to knock on doors in the snow. And all these years later, Barack Obama, I say to you, your friendship and your faith in me and in our campaign means the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. So Atlanta, before I was Vice President of the United States, before I was a United States Senator, and before that a two-term Attorney General for the state of California, and before that a district attorney and a courtroom prosecutor, and in those roles I took on perpetrators of all kinds, predators, fraudsters, and repeat offenders. I took them on and I won. Well, Georgia, in 12 days, is Donald Trump's turn. And he who has called for the quote, termination of the Constitution of the United States. Let us be very clear. Someone who suggests we should terminate the Constitution of the United States of America should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America. Never again. Never again. There is a huge contrast in this election. Just imagine, just imagine the Oval Office in three months. Picture it in your mind. It is either, so, but there's a choice that everybody has. So let's imagine it for a moment. It's either Donald Trump in there, stewing, stewing over his enemies list, or me, working for you, checking off my to-do list. You have the power to make that decision. It is your power. It is your power.
North Korean troops disguised as Baryats and Yakuts have been sent to help Russia retake the Kursk region, which has been partly held by Ukrainian forces since August, according to video footage released by South Korea's intelligence service, the Financial Times reports. Ukrainian analysts say the force is likely too small to turn the tide of the war, with Russia needing to double its 50,000 troops in the Kursk region to dislodge the Ukrainian military and launch a new wave of mobilization to make gains along the front lines in Ukraine. At the same time, Jack Waddling, a senior research fellow in land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute in the UK, believes that North Korea's ability to help Russia replenish its troops could create even more difficulties for Ukraine. They may have good enough cohesion. They may have enough morale. They may be able to operate on the scale that the Russians are trying to achieve. That's a low enough bar to be better than the Russians are now, the expert emphasized. The Financial Times noted that North Korean troops are reinforcing the Russian army at a time when Russia is trying to increase its forces due to huge losses in Ukraine. According to Western officials, they amount to more than 600,000 killed and wounded. Western intelligence also has information that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has not heeded requests from his top leadership to order a new wave of mobilization. Waddling noted that while Russia may face command and control issues with North Korean forces, its experience of operating with Iranian-backed forces and militias in the Syrian civil war will give Moscow's commanders a clear model to draw on. In turn, the National Intelligence Service of South Korea reports that the troops being sent to Russia belong to the 11th Army of the North Korea, an elite unit called the Storm Corps. These are not ordinary North Korean soldiers, most of whom have never had proper combat training. They are well-equipped, highly trained mobile light infantry, said Go Myung-hyun, a senior researcher at the South Korean state-run Institute for National Security Strategy in Seoul. At the same time, the Financial Times emphasizes that the North Korean troops will arrive at a time when Russia has pushed back the Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region, reducing the territory it holds to 600 to 700 square km in October from about 1,000 square km at the end of August. Waddling also added that Russia's goal is to put Ukraine in a situation where holding the entire front line would be impossible, since the occupiers would be putting pressure on the Ukrainian military at several different points along the front line at once. Ukraine constantly pays for the maintenance of this territory in the Kursk region, he said.